Hey guys, yesterday we introduced the idea of the final dramatic scene in Game of Thrones Season 8 being a trial by combat, but not just any trial by combat, a trial of seven or a trial by seven. Why? Because it's cool as hell. I'm kidding. The reason is because one of Cersei's biggest crimes was against the faith of the seven. So what better way for her to face justice than the trial by seven, something that has only been done in Westeros twice, once with Mago the Cruel versus the faith, and once with Brynn of Tart's ancestor, Sir Duncan the Tall. Link above if you want to check out that video. And real quick, thank you to Katina Meacham and Mary Wells for helping in the campaign to save a child's life. Thanks guys. Alright, here are most of the characters in Game of Thrones, dead and alive. But we are going to focus on these 21. We need to form two teams. So let's start with Cersei's. She's the hypothetical defendant in this trial by seven. Her team's pretty easy. Cersei doesn't have to fight for herself. Historically, royal women can appoint a champion, or in this case, seven champions. Her first will be the Mountain, of course, and maybe Euron. But Euron's doubtful for several reasons, the big one being, Euron probably won't be alive by the time a trial by seven goes down. What is dead may never die. What is dead may never die. Yeah! Whatever, dude. Get out of here. Cersei Seven will probably be the seven members of her Queen's Guard, and remember, Jaime is not on her Queen's Guard. Jaime wasn't even on Tommen's King's Guard at the end. If you don't recall, Tommen dismissed Jaime after Jaime and Mace Tyrell threatened the High Sparrow to prevent him from forcing Marjorie to do a Walk of Atonement, just like Cersei. When you attack the Faith, you attack the Crown. Anyone who attacks the crown is unfit to serve as Lord Commander of the King's Guard. So this is Cersei's team. Now let's look at the bad guys. Who will press the charges against our girl Cersei? Maybe Danny, but I'd prefer it if it were Sansa, the queen versus the young lady she unknowingly mentored. Plus, Sansa is a devout follower of the Seven, taking after Mama Dukes, Lady Cat of River Run. So it makes sense for her to coach the team in the trial by Seven. Let's call this Team Sansa, or Team Sansa and Tyrion for all you Sansa and Tyrion shippers. Since Tyrion has been involved in two of the three trial by combat so far, let's start off with him. Tyrion held his own on the road to the Vale and at the Battle of Blackwater. And at one point, he thought he'd have to fight the mountain. I suppose have to kill the mountain myself. Won't that make for a great song? I hope to hear them sing it one day. So it would be pretty cool for Tyrion to join this fight as a final hoorah against his lovely sister. But I wouldn't bet on it, so let's eliminate him. Jamie, on the other hand, is another story. Why Jamie? Well, it's just too poetic to pass up. If Sansa's team wins the trial, Cersei might be sentenced to death. So from a storytelling perspective, Jamie's got to be on the opposing team. We could end this war right now, boy. Save thousands of lives. You fight for the Lannisters. I fight for the Starks. Plus, it's a nod to Baylor Breakspear, an awesome Targaryen who chose to fight for Duncan the Tall against his evil nephew, Arian Brightflame. The question is, will Jamie survive the trial by combat, or is this a subtle way that Jamie and Cersei will leave the world together? Jamie going down in the fight, and Cersei after her champion goes down. So we've got 17 people to fill the remaining 6 spots. Bronze John Royce was a beast in the books, tier 3 fighter for sure, maybe a tier 2 fighter. But the show version of Bronze John is more of a lord and a politician than a fighter, so he's off the team. Next, my man, Robic Glover, who has one of the best delivered lines in the entire series. A man can only admit when he was wrong and ask forgiveness. House Clover will stand behind House Stark. And I will stand behind Jon Snow. The King in the North! Verbal badass. And he's a Northerner, so he's worth 10 Southerners. But the thing is, a trial by seven is a special type of trial by combat, special to the faith of the seven. Because in choosing seven fighters for each side, followers of the faith believe that you are honoring the seven. And to participate in a trial by seven, you need to be a knight, and knighthood is also related to the Seven. So here's what I'm getting at. A northerner, like Lord Glover, he worships the old gods. He's not a knight, so he's off the team. And so are Athena and Yara. I'd love to see Yara fight again, she's a badass. 
but the Ironborn worship the Drowned God, so neither of them are knights either, and neither is the dude whom I both envy and pity very much. Grey Worm. But to play devil's advocate, any knight can make a knight. They did this in Sir Duncan Atoll's Trial by Seven. Lionel Baratheon, the Laughing Storm, he knighted Sir Raymond Fossaway in order to fill out the seventh spot on Sir Duncan's team. So we should expect them to knight someone in Season 8, specifically for this Trial by Seven. Who will it be? Lady Brienne. Brienne will be the first woman ever knighted. We all expected this. And she's a descendant of Lord Commander Duncan, Duncan the Tall. So that's a cool nod to the prior Trial by Seven. And the icing on the cake for Lady Brienne is that Lady Brienne, Brienne the Beauty, is probably the younger, more beautiful person from Maggie the Frog's prophecy. Brienne is stealing Jamie's heart, so why not fight on Team Sansa against Jamie's bitter ex, Cersei of Clan Lannister? And I'll take care of Brienne and raise you a Podrick Payne. Podrick is clear headed, brave, and clutch on the battlefield. Case in point. Whoops, that's not it. Nope, not that either. There it is. Pod is awesome. Brienne's had him under her wing for a while, so expect Jamie to knight Brienne, and for Brienne to subsequently knight Pot. And if Pot puts in another good showing, who knows? Maybe he'll win the little bird's heart. They'd be cute together. I'd watch it. Moving on. Ten people for the final four spots. Let's count out Sir Edmure. He hates the Lannisters, but if a trial by seven goes down, it's going to be an epic event, and I just don't see Edmure as being part of it. Sorry, Edmure. Your wife's hot, though, so there's that. Speaking of wives, Sir Davos is my boy, but... I'll be staying behind. I'm a liability out there, as you well know. You are. So the Onion Knight is off the team. But that's all good, because we want him to survive, so that he can go finally reunite with his own wife. And I'm going to count out Jon Snow, too. I think Jon will be gone, back to the mud, by the time that the trial by seven goes down. Let me know if you disagree. But either way, Jon Snow is a northerner, so just like Ned and Jory Cassell... And the captain of his guard. I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name, sir. No, sir. I'm not a knight. Jon Snow is not a knight. At least, not in title. He's a true knight, though, if there ever was one. I shouldn't have said that, all oh, you John and Sansa shippers. But then we've got someone like Ser Jorah. Notice how I said Ser, Ser Jorah. He's a knight. He's from the north and he worships the old gods, but he was knighted by King Robert for his bravery during the Great Jorah Rebellion. He was second through the breach at Pike, right on the heels of the late Thoros Amir. Jorah could find a spot on this team, and if a trial by seven goes down at the Dragon Pit, it will be a nod to his time in Marine as a pit fighter. I brought you a gift. It's true. He has. I am the gift. Next up, Sandor Clegane. Count him in. Clegane Bowl, baby. And Sandor's participation will be another nod to Baylor Breakspear, the Hammer who fought against his brother Makar in Sir Duncan the Tall's Trial by Seven. Baylor was a cool dude, and Sanders a cool dude in different ways. But don't forget, Baylor was killed by his brother in that trial. Dun dun dun. Next up, fan favorite, Tormund Giantsbane. Fans would love to see Tormund join the dance, and if this happens in the books, I'd like to think that Mance Raider gets a chance. But I don't see them knighting Tormund, and he does not have a personal bone to pick with Cersei, so Tormund, you're out of here. Bronn, however, does have a bone to pick with Cersei. In the books, Cersei is trying to kill him. Check out the link to that video above. And in the show, Cersei killed Tyene and her perky breast assist. So here's the best part. Bronn fighting as vengeance for Tyene is another nod to Sir Duncan the Tall's trial by seven. Because the reason that Dunk the Lunk was put onto trial in the first place is because he punched and kicked Arian Brightflame, Arian the Monstrous, because Arian was attacking a Dornish girl, just like Tyene. And don't forget, Tywin knighted Bronn, so Bronn of the Blackwater. So he's already eligible to participate. He's a knight. But beyond that, Tywin knighted Bronn as an insult to Tyrion, on back of Tyrion's accomplishments at the Battle of Blackwater. That made Sir Bronn a suitable match for a younger daughter of a noble house. So later on, Cersei married him to Lady Tonda as a disincentive for Bronn to champion Tyrion at his second trial by combat. So count Bronn in. Karma is a biot, Cersei, and Bronn is a panther. We've got one spot left, but three people. Who's it going to be? Lord Beric, the Lightning Lord. Think about it. 
Lord Beric once said that the war began when the Hand, Ned Stark, sent him out to bring the King's justice to Gregor Clegane, and that's how he means for the war to end. So imagine Beric striking the final blow on Gregor and indirectly landing the final blow on Cersei, ending the war once and for all. But there's a problem. Beric's dead in the books. So if a trial by seven happens in the show and the books alike, then Beric Dondarrion is not going to be part of it. However, Lord Beric knighted Gendry in the books, Ser Gendry, Knight of the Hollow Hill. Because remember, show Gendry is an amalgamation of Book Gendry and Book Edric Storm. Edric Storm does all the Melisandre stuff, but Gendry's still with the Brotherhood Without Banners. So Beric gave up his own life fire to raise Lady Catelyn as Lady Stoneheart, so Beric's off the team, but Gendry is still alive. He's shirtless and he's hammering out swords, waiting for his big moment. He went for his big moment in Season 7. Sir Davos told me where you're going, your grace and why. Let me come with you. Don't be a fool. You're not a soldier. No, but I'm a fighter. But they sent him running for help. So here's his opportunity, the trial by seven. And here are the teams. Who knows? Maybe Robert's own blood, Sir Gendry, Knight of the Hollow Hill? Maybe Gendry hammers out the final blow in the Game of Thrones, taking out the mountain and effectively sentencing Cersei Lannister to death. When you play the Game of Thrones, you win or you die. 